So I recently bought myself a Wacom CTL472 graphics tablet, and if you want to see my full thoughts on this, go check out its dedicated video. And when I plug this in, the drivers under Linux work bloody fantastically, except for a couple of little issues. Firstly, I have more than one monitor, and the drivers don't like that, and secondly, uh, no drawing tablet on the entire planet is 16 by 9. This one is 1.6 by 1, and that means that everything I try to draw with it is going to be slightly skewed. Luckily, both these problems can be fixed. Now, I'm going to be doing this under Xorg, but if you're on Wayland, the way that you configure the drivers is going to very much depend on what you're actually using as your compositor. WL Roots will have its method, Cable will have a method, Mudder will have a method. Most of them do have some graphical utilities you can use, but with Xorg, we're going to be doing it from the terminal. Luckily, though, it's not many commands we actually need to run. The first thing you're going to need to do is ensure that you actually have the input Wacom kernel module actually installed. Now, in the case of Arch Linux, this is going to be installed with the kernel you actually install just normally for your distro. And presumably on most distros, it is just going to be installed out of the box. If it's not, check how it is packaged on your distro, or if you don't have a package for it, you will have to go and install that manually. But outside of things like Gen 2, that probably won't be required. If you want to make sure it is installed and is actually running, what you can do is a sudo d message then pipe that into grep-i, and we're going to search for Wacom. And as we can see, that actually is running. This is an open source kernel module, originally started as a community project, which eventually got picked up by Wacom, who decided to go and add some Wacom developers to the project. So expect this to continue to be working long into the future. Now, the next thing you're going to need to do is ensure that you actually have the Xorg driver installed. So if we do a sudo pacman dash s xf86 input dash Wacom, this is going to be the driver you need to install. Now, on other distros, it may not have this exact same name, but if you search for this name, you should be able to find it. If you don't already have that driver installed, once it is installed, make sure you go and restart X, and then once you've done that, you can then go and plug in your tablet, and doing so, you will find that your tablet is working but if you have multiple monitors, it's not working as it should be. So the way that Xorg handles stuff out of the box is it basically glues all of the monitors together into one meta monitor. So in my case, I have three 1920 by 1080 monitors, but it actually detects this as one really long monitor. The first step to fixing this is working out what devices are actually being detected. Luckily, that driver that we installed actually comes with a program to help us do this. That program is going to be called Xset Wacom. So with this program, what we can do is list devices and that will list out everything being detected inside of X. In my case, I've got this stylus and apparently an eraser, but this pen does not have an eraser on it, so I don't know where that's being detected. Um, but yeah, apparently there's that as well. So the one that we care about in this case is going to be the stylus. Now, before we get into fixing the problem, there are some GUI utilities you can use. There is one built for KDE, one built for GNOME, and one built for Cinnamon, but like most applications built for a desktop environment, they have massive dependencies on other things in the desktop environment. So unless you're already using those, I wouldn't recommend using one of those applications. Now, there is also Wacom-GUI. The problem with this one, though, is it's written in Python 2, and apparently is still being updated for some reason, but it's written in Python 2. I wasn't able to get it to work, but maybe someone can fix it. The other one is this proprietary application that hasn't been updated in about 10 years. So unless you have a tablet from 10 years ago, I wouldn't expect that to work. 
Now let's get to fixing the tablet area. So there are two ways this can be modified. We have how the tablet area maps to your monitor space and then how much of the tablet area you actually want to use. So in my case, what I want to do is I want to have this tablet map to a single monitor. In my case, I'm going to do my primary monitor and then I want to use as much of the tablet space as possible, but only have it be a 16 by 9 box, which still should be most of it, but it will cut out maybe a line or so. The first thing we need is the ID of the thing we want to modify. In my case, that's going to be our stylus. If I actually did have an eraser, I probably would want that to be mapped the exact same way my stylus is as well. Luckily, that command we ran before actually did print out the ID. So these IDs can change between different driver refreshes and unplugging the device. So I would recommend checking them if you try to run the command and it doesn't actually work. My case is going to be 16, but that isn't guaranteed. The monitor mapping can be fixed with the map to output subcommand. So if we go and run except Wacom, set, pass in the ID, then map to output, then this takes in four values in a single string. So the width, the height, the X, and the Y. So like most things in computing, the top left-hand corner is going to be zero, zero. So if we go and set this to 1920 by 1080, that is the resolution of my monitor, then if I want it to be on my main monitor, that is the monitor in the middle of my monitor configuration. So I'm going to do plus 1920 and then a plus zero on the Y. This does entirely depend on the resolution of your monitors, so make sure you do the calculations for yourself. But if I go and run this now, and I try to use my pen, if I go to the left hand most edge of my tablet, that is going to the left hand most edge of my main monitor. In this state it is completely usable, but something is going to feel a little off, and that's because the aspect ratio isn't actually set properly, so it's not using a 16 by 9 ratio, and when you try to draw something like a square, it is going to be a little bit squished. Ignore the fact that my lines are horrible, it is a rectangle instead of a square. So this can be fixed by slightly reducing the amount of drawing space we actually want to use. Once again, this can be done with the X set Wacom command, but instead of doing map to output, what we're instead going to do is the area command. So this takes in four values. These are going to be space separated values. So once again, we have X and Y, this time in a different order. Then we have the tablet width and the tablet height. Now tablet width and height is not going to be in pixels. It's instead going to be in absolute tablet area. To do the calculation, we first need to find out what these values are actually set to. Luckily, X set Wacom does actually come with a utility to do that, and that is by using the get subcommand instead of the set subcommand. In this case, it's set to 00, zero so start in the top left-hand corner, 15,200 by 9,500. So the formula to do this isn't that difficult, and you can do it in a couple of seconds, really. So it's going to be your tablet width. So in my case, that's going to be 15,200 times by your screen height. This is in pixels. So my screen height is 1080. Then divided by your screen width. So in my case, 1920. And whatever the result of that is, that is going to be what you set it to. So if we do X set Wacom set 16 area, then 0, 0, 15,200, and then 8, 5, 50. That is now going to make the tablet behave like it actually should be. So let's say we draw it here. Maybe it won't look that different because I'm terrible at drawing, but that should be more square-like than it was before. Pen pressure can also be set inside of X set Wacom as well. That is going to be done with the pressure curve command. And by default, it's going to be set to 0, 0, 100, 100. Now, to understand this one, you basically need to just have a look at the graph of how pen pressure actually functions. So, it's only going to be a, a linear value. By default, 0, 0 is going to be basically no pressure. Then, 100, 100 is going to be maximum pressure. So, if you want it to be, say less pressure, you might bring it down to like 80 or something. If you want the start to be more pressure, maybe you bring that up to like 20 or so. 
I don't think you should be setting this in the drivers. I think it makes more sense to set it in the few applications that you actually use. Especially because there's no way to actually have anything besides a linear curve. I like to have a flat point in the center where I can basically move my pressure around but still have the same level of pressure on the screen. Now technically my stylus has three buttons. We have the main button, the one you actually tap the tablet with. That is bound to left mouse click. Then we have one button here and one button here. The first one is bound to middle mouse click and the next one is bound to right mouse click. Now these are fairly sensible bindings. I don't really see any reason to actually change them. But if you do want to change them, you actually can go and do so. So that's going to be done with, once again, the X set Wacom command. This time we're going to be using the button command instead. So button, and we need to actually know the button ID. Now in my case, the buttons are numbered sequentially. So one, then two, then three. And I imagine most tablets are probably going to be the same. So I'm going to go and rebind button 2. And what we need to bind this to, there's a couple of things we can do. I'm going to stick with the easiest thing. So I'm going to bind it to a single key press. And we need to actually know the key sim of the key. Now, if it's going to be something like just printing out the N key or printing out the uh, F key, you can just go and include the actual printable name for it, but in some cases it doesn't have as obvious of a name. So if instead we go into slash user slash include slash x11 slash keysim def, this is going to be where the keysims are actually defined. So scrolling through here for a while, you'll start to see a bunch of different keysims in here. Basically, the name you need to use is drop the XK underscore and whatever it says after that. So if you want to use something like, say, backspace, it's going to be spelled exactly like this. And if we go and run that command, and now I go and type some stuff out and start pressing the second button on my stylus, that will then go and delete that. You can set up like massive key macros and other stuff like that, but most of the time you're probably going to bind it to a single key. Now, one thing to note about any of these settings you do set, once you go and unplug the tablet and then re-plug it back in, everything that you've set so far is going to be reset. So any settings you do want to keep, I would highly recommend sticking them inside of a script and then running it every single time you plug the tablet in. Not every application supports tablet input out of the box. I would recommend going over to the Arch Linux wiki or going to the applications website and checking what you actually need to do to make sure it's actually working. In my case, I only use Critter and in Critter it just works out of the box. Maybe you will need to do something, in which case there is a bit of stuff you can do, but for most systems that'll work just fine. Everything else though, there is a little bit of configuration you might need to do. Now this is just being configuring the stylus and there is a ton of other things you can actually configure with it as well, but other tablets might have some extra additions like say a finger touchpad, for example, and all of those things, if they're being detected inside of X, can be configured with X set Wacom. Honestly, the Wacom drivers are fantastic under Linux. Really, the only thing that could make it a little bit better is having some form of actually updated GUI interface that isn't dependent on a desktop environment. While X set Wacom isn't that difficult to use, setting things like your tablet drawing area might actually be easier with a graphical interface. So that's going to be it for me and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribe star Liberapay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week and upload five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. I do also plan to do a video on the open tablet drivers, which I wouldn't use for drawing, but do have their own specific use cases. So that's going to be it for me, and I'm out.